Hello and welcome to the blend of sports on the fly and off the bounce in sacks. Johnny Diaz. How's it going, Johnny? It's going great. You know, the, this 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 blend happened on the fly. Kenny decided not to show up today. <laughs> so Johnny was right outside and was gracious enough to say, You wanna you wanna have me come on the show? And I said, Yeah, why not? Let's do it. So we're here, and we're going to talk some basketball. Basketball, basketball, and you know what, Johnny? What are we going to do? Some more basketball. Some more basketball, some more off the bounce, and everything. Now, I asked you what you wanted to talk about first, and you said, let's go MVP race. So right now, we've got, what, about a handful of games left. Yes. Who are, who's your MVP? Now, if I say it, there's going to be half that is going to agree with me, and the other half is not. But I'm going to have to say, Stephon Curry. He is... What else can that man do? What does he have to do to prove himself that he's the MVP of this season? Am I going to have to be the coach and go over there? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, no, Stephon Curry is unbelievable. I mean, this guy has improved throughout the whole years and not only that last night against the trailblazers broke his own record for most threes in a season let me repeat that broke his own record of the nba of most three pointers in the nba season so what else does this man have to do to get mvp you saw him break the ankles actually not break the ankles of chris paul made him play twister <laughs> Made him play Twister, folks. Oh, my gosh. So what does Stephon Curry have to do? Does he have to create more more of those play, having players play Twister? <laughs> you know? I mean, this guy is just, oh, I just admire his game. He really, a lot of people are saying that Reggie Miller has already been doing this with the threes, you know, him, him making incredible moves to win games. But I think... Curry has gone to another level. I think a level that an ideal shot that a coach tries to teach you, <laughs> that's another thing. But how fast and how much room you give him, whether it's a little bit of space or outside of space, he's going to take the shot. And that instinct that he has, you could compare it to Michael Jordan. I mean, he's not Michael Jordan, but you can compare his instinct like Michael Jordan, like Kobe Bryant. You know, he wants to win championships. I, and it's all about, with him, it's all about winning. It's all about playing as a team. He's not an individual player. That's what makes, every, that's what makes great players away from superstar players that think are, it's just all about them. And that's why I really admire Golden State and Stephen Curry. Yeah, I, you know, when you look at it and you look at the season, you say, wow, well, Russell Westbrook has, you know, 11 triple doubles, which yeah. is just an insane amount. Then you go James Harden, who's putting up points like it's going out of style. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, you're always going to have LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, no matter – whenever LeBron James steps on the court, he's going to be in the – discussion for MVP. Yeah, That's, absolutely. It, he's the best player on the planet. Yeah. That it, It's it's going to happen. But when you look at the job that Stephen Curry has done this year, and you think about valuable, yeah. stats are good, and they're a good measure for value, but they're not the be-all, end-all. If, if you look at stats, you say, okay, you know, who's leading the team in – it, or who's leading the league in scoring, and you need points to win, so boom, there you go. Mm. But there's so many different aspects to the game, and when you look at what Stephen Curry has done, now this Golden State team, they have made the playoffs the last few years yep. and gotten better every single year. Yep. But to see the progression from even last year to this year, where they go from 50 wins last year mm -hmm. to upper 60s, I think that if they went out, is it could they get 68, I think? 
six. They have fourteen losses, yeah. right? Fourteen well, losses. So if they went out, they could get sixty-eight wins. Yeah. Sixty-eight wins. I think it, that's only been done by the the by the seventy-two and ten Bulls. Yeah. And I think that might be it. Yeah. No so, one else is uh, not nobody that I could think of that has. Mark that right. right. I I know sixty six and sixteen has been done by Boston. But, but right, mm-hmm. the the Celtics did it. I think the Cavs did it one yeah. year. But sixty eight and fourteen to go where only the seventy two and ten Bulls went, uh-huh. or so uh, yes, yeah, seventy two and ten is unheard of. Stephen Curry, without a doubt. I mean, look, Russell Westbrook, yes, has done a great job, but the Thunder are on the brink of missing the playoffs. Mm-hmm. The Rockets, James Harden, good, you know, probably going to get the three around the 3 seed in the Western Conference. Look, that's good, but it's not 68 and 14 good. Mm-hmm. The Cavs, good good season, probably going to lock up the 2 seed in the East, but one you're playing in the East, mm-hmm. and two they're not going 68 and 14. Mm-hmm. Stephen Curry absolutely have to look at him MVP. And I, I I really don't think it it should be close. It you know you got to think about it too. James Harden when he went to the Houston Rockets, look how much they improved. You know what I'm saying? They improved so much dramatically, and so has Golden State. So when you look at an MVP player, it's not just how is their individual performance; it's also as a team. What have they done that it has made it wow? You know, okay, so this team has stand out. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is going to be a tight race. It is going to be a tight race, but then I feel like Curry favors a little more than James Harden because he got the number one seed. He, they got the division championships, and they got that, and they, I, what was it, 74 the last time they had it, 1974, Golden State Warriors took that division? I think so. I mean, the Warriors have been near the, have not been an elite team in mm-hmm. so long. long. Yeah. So long. I mean, when they made the playoffs, I think about the f- for the first time in what seemed like forever three years ago, mm-hmm. it it looked like, wow, you know, where have the Warriors been? And now, you know, they, they've been in the playoffs and they, they've gotten the experience. Mm-hmm. But now the way Curry has played this year, he's elevated that franchise to not being a playoff contender, mm-hmm. not being – in the playoffs, to being a title, not only contender, but a title favorite. Yeah. Now, question for you, Ian. Do you think Steve Kerr deserves Coach of the Year? You can absolutely make an argument. Absolutely. The job that he's done, you know, improving a, that team from a, a good team to a great team, uh, upping their win total by at least 15, possibly maximum, if they went out 18 games. Great job. Yeah. But you have to look at what he has around him. Yeah. He has Stephen Curry. Mm-hmm. He has Clay Thompson. Mm-hmm. He inherited a 50-win team. Yeah. When you put all those factors together, yeah, you know, you're, you're going to have a good team. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not, you know, the level that they did have, mm-hmm. but... So, yes, I credit some of the, their improvement this year to Steve Kerr. Mm-hmm. But you have to look at the Atlanta Hawks coach. I, I, I've, yeah, for, I, I, I'm, bl- I'm blanking on his name right now. But, you know, the, the Warriors, we expected to be a good team, at least playoffs in the Western mm-hmm. Conference. Not the, We didn't expect them to be the best team out West. Yeah. But we expected them, them to make the playoffs, contend, win at least – 45 50 games the hawks i expected to be 500 or below okay maybe a few games over 500 but seriously nothing nothing good maybe at best the five seed in the eastern conference Mm -hmm. to win the eastern conference the one seed there going away over now I know the Western Conference is a lot more competitive, yeah. but you still have the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. You still have the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. You still have the Washington Wizards. You still have who's uh, the Toronto Raptors. Mm-hmm. You still have at least those four 
quality teams in the Eastern Conference, for the Hawks to come out and not only compete with them, not only be right up there in the standings with them, but to have a, a big enough cushion to already have the one seed easily locked up, the, you, 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 have to, you have to give Coach of the Year to their coach. Yeah. Now, now, what about you? Steve Kerr, the Hawks, or someone else? I would like Steve Kerr. I mean, just to – you got to think about it, really, is that the Warrior fans were making a big deal when Mark Jackson was let go last year. And they were wondering who was going to take that position as head coach. Because don't get me wrong, Mark Jackson did create the Warriors to be that good with Stephon Curry, adding great players to surround Stephon Curry. With the situation with, between Stephon – who they were going to keep – Back in the day with Stephon Curry or Monte Ellis, he wanted Stephon Curry. And to take that chance when Stephon Curry had ankle problems was very, very, I mean, that's, that's, that's skyrocket of confidence that you believe that this player can really change this team, you know. And that's why Warrior fans were upset. Who was going to take that position? And now when I heard Steve Kerr was taking it, I was asking questions. Can he handle that team? With Stephon Curry, Clay Thompson, Andrew Bogut, you know, can he handle? It? They have a great team. Can a, a rookie coach? It takes a while for them, maybe a couple seasons to three, okay, to get in the groove to show their talent as a coach. And he did it with that. What was it? Eighteen game win streak. That's crazy. You know, that, that's what makes a great coach. But not only that, he's been coached by Phil Jackson. He played with Michael Jordan. You know, so he understands how to be in that environment of a great team. And so he took that aspect and did it as a head coach. And he did a great job. And now, don't get me wrong, I would like the Atlanta Hawks head coach to take it too. Why not a co? <laughs> a co coach of the year? It. it- it, it certainly is possible. If they s- split the votes and, mm. and get, get an equal number, then it mm. will be co-head coaches. I, yeah. I just looked it up. The Atlanta Hawks head coach, Mike Budenholzer. Budenholzer. Um, but, you know, Johnny, it, it, I, I agree mm-hmm. completely with the job that Steve Kerr has done mm. for a rookie head coach mm-hmm. to enter that situation. Mm-hmm. Warrior fans expecting – to be good this year mm-hmm. and everything and managing, you know, the, the talent of the, of Stephen Curry yeah. and then ma- managing the players around him and making sure they're happy and, and content playing with such a, such an elite scorer. But, you know, we, t- you, you touched on it. Th- that was built by Mark Jackson. Steve Kerr walked into a great situation. Mm-hmm. Budenholzer this year, the the Atlanta Hawks, I can assure you, were pre, were projected to be mid level at best yeah. in the Eastern Conference. They're one of the top five teams in the NBA. Yeah. Mid level in the oh, subpar uh, Eastern Conference. You know, I I I just think you have to look at expectations yeah. and what he's working with. He doesn't have a Stephen Curry. He doesn't have a Clay Thompson. Yes, he has Al Horford and a lot of good players, but there are no superstars on that team. Yeah. And see, and that's what it goes to. I like to call the Atlanta Hawks the young Spurs, you know, because they do play as a team. But not only that, what got to me is that, I don't know, it, it was in January, it had to be in January, when they, all five players got player of the month. That has never been done. Now, that... That's great, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me, but having five players, player of the month together, that that is awesome. That's that's where it goes down to great coaching because they also had a win streak too. Right. Well, well that shows you that the balance there, and yeah. I, I love that comparison mm-hmm. of the Hawks as the young Spurs mm-hmm. because it's not a team of superstars. It's not driven by one, two, three, a big three. Yeah. It's driven by it doesn't matter who gets the points, who gets the rebound, who gets the assist, as long as it's acquired by someone on that team, mm-hmm. it's fine. Yeah. Nobody wants the credit. 
They just want to win. Yeah. And that's that's a beautiful thing. That's exactly how basketball should be played. Exactly. Well, Johnny, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back. We'll get into some playoff scenarios okay. and who we want to see matching up, who we want to see get in, and maybe even a little surprise return from somebody. Hey. Hey, it's Ken Dashow from Q104.3. 